My next guest says Democratic leaders, as we've just been discussing, can't afford not to provide state and local tax relief. And that the infrastructure deal is a political victory for President Biden, regardless of whether it actually gets signed into law. Let's welcome in Dan Clifton. He's head of policy research for Strategist Research Partners. Dan, how can it be a victory if it doesn't even happen? Yeah, well, the president got a big announcement on a bipartisan deal. He's going to storm the country for the next three weeks, starting in Wisconsin this week, talking about a bipartisan infrastructure deal. But this is a very shaky agreement that was reached, Kelly. What you see is that the pay fors may not fully pay for the deal. You also have the Democratic leadership trying to link this to a reconciliation bill. There's a real chance that this agreement actually never makes it into law. But by the time we're done having that debate, it gives Senator Manchin and Sinema enough political cover to join the reconciliation process and to put those provisions in a Democratic-only tax bill, which there's widespread agreement for. Now, some provisions may not fully be able to qualify for reconciliation that was in this bipartisan infrastructure deal, but it feels like just having that discussion is getting the president the political win he needs, even though it was pretty clumsy the rollout over the last couple of days. So by the end of the year, what is actually signed into law in terms of infrastructure, in terms of total new spending? Yeah, Kelly, you know what? It feels like four years ago in June of the Trump administration, first year of the Trump administration, nobody thought he could get his tax reform through. We knew we had a very uh, rocky six month period of going through the legislative process. And you remember that very well. You covered it excellent during that time. And I think we're facing a very similar situation here. There's going to be ups and downs. The process is not fully determined on the path that we are going to take on this. But ultimately, the Democrats are suggesting that they need $2 trillion of spending to stay competitive in the election, and they are going to use the tools available to get there. It's like a big Rubik's Cube right now. They're just trying to figure out how to get all those pieces to fit. That's an extraordinarily messy process. I think by the end of the year, they're probably going to get one and a half to $2 trillion, and they're going to get tax increases. So the most important takeaway for investors is that the fiscal policy debate of the Biden agenda started last week, and the Democrats are moving forward on reconciliation. And that's going to bring a lot of tax headline risk over the next couple of months. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.